What kills me with this clip is that I've seen it over and over and over again throughout this entire thread. I've known my husband since we were 11. We are 32 now. We've been married for 10 years and I think he is the best man in the entire world and I have still freaking messed up in the way I've expected him to act. I remember years ago, we were in a really dark place in our marriage and I was so angry with him and everything. I felt like he could never do anything right. And I said to him, why don't you ever tell me what you think? Why don't you ever let me know what you feel? Why? Do you know what he said to me? He said, you never ask. He said, if you do, he said, if you happen to ask, you will use it against me later. He said, this is not safe. And that was the first time that I went, wow. I'm not always the victim like I'm acting like I am. And it has really shaped the mentality that I try to live out in my marriage and in relationships. So I do just want to more acknowledge that, that like you're not totally wrong. I mean, don't use that as a crutch. But like, yeah, we do that sometimes. Women do. I'm sorry we shouldn't. Here's three core beliefs that I had to get rid of in order to heal myself and to save my marriage. I don't have to ask for what I want directly. I used to think that if my husband loved me, he would just know what I need, or I shouldn't have to ask him to do certain things for me. That is a false belief. It is not true, and it will cause you harm in your relationship. I gave more in the relationship, therefore I am owed something in return. This can really get you in trouble and starting to play tit for tat games with your partner and it could be a foundation for further manipulation of your partner. And the third belief that I had to get rid of was that being right was important. In a relationship, it is not about being right. It is about coming to an understanding and a certain level of respect between the two of you. OT snapped on her. Do you, do you write do? stories? What do you do? I write stories. What do you do? I write stories. Yeah. What's that jacket? What you mean? Sean What's your shirt under you? What you mean? It's fucking pretty little What's thing. What's the earrings that you got on? What you mean? What's the earrings that you got on? I don't remember. What's the shoes that you got on? Oh. Respect me. You and a, Let me tell you something. I respect you. I'm on a whole nother level. Don't okay. do that. Don't okay. do that. Yeah. Sweetheart, this is okay. not it. This is not, this is not, the, this is not junior high school. Okay. I'm in a big league. Okay. I'm in a big league. No, no, no. I'm in a big league. Let me tell you something. 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 I'm in a big league. Right. I'm listen. Let me tell you something. Right. I'm really rich. I'm not. I'm not what you. I'm not your rich. Right. Or what you look at is rich. Right. No, 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 no. Look. Look. You get what I'm saying? Okay. I'm in a big league. Right. Big league. Thank you, Crush Chase. You is by making her aware that you have other options on the table. What I mean by this is that if you show her that you have other girls that are interested in you, it kind of provides like urgency for her to want you more, but that actually means that she kind of gets jealous. Now, if you have no one coming after you, she might just think that you're like not wanted by other girls, so like why would she want you? But if you show that you have other girls wanting your attention as well, it shows that you're kind of a guy that's like a catch. So making her aware that you have other options on the table is a huge way to get her attention. Here's why you should never open up to your women. Part 1. Regardless of the scenario, whether it's pillow talking after sex or you're going through a hard time in your life, she tells you, you can tell me everything. Our secrets are safe. So you drop your guard down and tell her everything. There are girls who terminate long-term relationships because she heard that the guy is actually going through depression with his work. There's the soldier's wife filing divorce because the soldier told her how scared he actually was during the war. Every single thing you tell her will be stocked in her arsenal and it will be used against you when she sees fit. Women can't beat men physically, but they will try to break down guys emotionally and mentally with words. If you still want to do it, go for it. Just remember, you have been warned. Album, well, a I can... baby. <laughs> I want a baby. You want a baby? I want a baby. When's the baby coming? I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I don't know who your man is. We gotta know I don't who have your man, man is first. Oh, I don't okay. have a man. Well, once we find a man, then we'll worry about I the just, baby. I'm just ready. I'm, I'm getting older, you know. I, I don't hide it. my age. Like, I'm getting older and I want to. I want a baby. Young, though, girl. I'm, I, I, know, I know I'm young. I'm very young. <laughs> but, like, just, let's be real. Like, I want I want to have a, I want to pop out and I want to snap back. I love that. Yeah. Period. Just more proof that y'all goofy asses just want a baby. 
See, when I say single mothers are single mothers on purpose and all y'all want is a damn baby and, you know, you sit around whining about, oh, he manipulated me. No, he didn't. You just want a damn baby. See, I know the secret. You don't trust men. You don't trust women, period. And you don't trust yourself. So how is a lost-ass person who doesn't trust men, doesn't trust themselves, doesn't understand the opposite sex, stuck with all kinds of childhood trauma, going to actually find a man, keep a man, and get him to marry you? It's not going to happen. And you know it's not going to happen. So what do you say? Eh, I don't want a man anyway. I'm just going to romanticize and, and act like I want to get married, but I don't want to get married. And if you do want to get married, you just want to get married for the, for the damn wedding. But you don't want a marriage. See, getting married and having a marriage, those are two different things. Just think about all the young girls that look up to her. All the young girls who's just like, oh, my gosh, she's so pretty. And this dummy stands up and says, I want a baby. And she says, so do you got a boyfriend? Do you got a husband? Uh, no. But, but I don't care. I want a baby. And the last part is the dumbest part. She says, well, I just want to have a baby and snap back. A baby is not a goddamn exercise. It's a person. But y'all don't care about people. Like I said, you don't trust men. You don't trust other women. You don't trust yourself. You don't even trust your parents because they fucked your life up too. This is the reason why I do what I do. Because all of y'all goofy asses really want is a goddamn baby. And you wonder why the single mother epidemic just won't stop. Because y'all won't let it stop. Find a fucking husband and sit your ass down somewhere. Oh, that's right. You can't do that because you don't understand men. But this is why I do what I do. So the next time y'all sit around saying, you're bashing single mothers. No. I'm just trying to stop y'all from doing this stupid shit to yourselves and your kids. Find a fucking husband. There's no honor in staying in a bad relationship. You're not doing anything noble. You're not doing any. Okay, so he's right, right? There is no honor in staying in a relationship that is not where you should be, if, especially if the relationship is toxic and horrible. But I'm going to talk to my mothers. So if you're not a mother, if you don't have children, you may want to scroll past this. This may not apply to you. This will not apply to you. Mothers who are in relationships with a man or is married to a man, and you're sitting there thinking about, should I leave? If I leave, what happens to these children? Can I leave? Especially if you're in a situation where the main breadwinner is the man. Can I do this by myself? I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, you can. You can do anything you, you set your mind to. It's hard to imagine, but let's just, for the sake of argument, say that you can. Say everything that you need is going to be fulfilled some way, somehow. Would you do it? Would you take your kids and would you get out? If there's no possibility of you losing your children, because I know that was mine. That was my big one right there. If you can have your kids and you can get everything taken care of, you don't have to worry about anything. Would you leave right now? Would you pack your bags, pack the kids, go? If the answer is yes, then you need to, then you need to go. You need to pack your stuff. And you need to figure out a way to get out. Because what that tells me is this. And what this should tell you is this. You're only there because of circumstances. You're only there because you feel like you cannot. And I'm here to tell you, you can. All right? I was in a 10-year marriage. Didn't think I could do it by myself. Thought I was going to lose my kids. Because I couldn't provide for them like he did. But what I wasn't realizing is the same damages that was happening to me in the relationship was happening to them kids simultaneously and I was not able to protect them from seeing the damage that was happening to myself as well as them. You're not doing anybody any favors by staying. 
with the kids? If your answer is yes, get your stuff and go. You have family and friends that will help you. You might have to humble yourself and ask for help, but go. You owe that man nothing. Ladies, here are a few good tips on how to keep your good man. Keyword, good man. By good, I mean a man of good character and integrity. Let's go. Number one, respect that man. And by respect, I mean listen to him. Stop popping off at the mouth so much. Be a safe space for him. Allow him to talk and communicate without you popping off and reacting before listening to everything he says. Number two, keep in mind that most men don't have the spaces that are as welcoming for them to be able to express themselves without ridicule and judgment. They don't have that like women have that. So make sure that you are available and that you prioritize him in the day and not make him your last priority. No one wants your leftovers, right? They don't want your leftover time and energy. Yes, we women have to work and it's not 1940. We don't get to stay home and, you know, be pregnant and rest and, and take care of the house. Yes, we work like they do. But you also need to know they need to feel prioritized and important. Number three, men value They value peace. They don't want to do drama. Save the drama for the pages of your diary, Keisha and them, or your therapist. Yes, communicate your emotional needs and things with your significant other. But my God, don't be so dramatic and have so much emotional turmoil that the man wants to run and hide and stay at work. Because guess what? They'll do just that. Don't assume he is psychic. <laughs> Learn how to talk and communicate your needs in a healthy way. Passive aggression is not it, honey. That is drama. And he is going to haul ass away from you. Yep, he's going to do it. <laughs> Come here. This is going to surprise you. Watch your spending. Men want women they can build with. 